Hi, this is Mridula Anand and I'm in conversation with Vidya Subramaniam. So Vidya, welcome to Chennai and I'm really happy to be having this conversation with you. Given that you have learnt dance in Chennai and then moved to the Bay Area, what was your initial um, reaction to the art scene, at least the Indian dance scene in the Bay Area and how has it changed for the good or the bad, both the pros and the cons in the last couple of decades that you've been there? Uh, to me, a place is just that. It's a geographical space, yes. Um, and it comes with its cultural conditioning. It comes with a lot of its own history and a lot of its own, uh, uh, you know, parameters that we have to get assimilated into or not. But uh, how it affects our dancing is a different question. I, I was performing a lot at that time. I was I had at least an average five to six performances a month, and I, and then one fine day I was gone. And I went at a time when things nothing was happening in the U.S. at that time. I mean, there were other teachers who had already set up uh, who were who, who had gotten there way ahead of me, but uh, performance wise, nothing. It was a struggle in itself uh, to make that transition to from having been active to inactive. And uh, so then you go about creating your own opportunities. And um, then at some point it felt like that's all you were doing. You know, you were self-producing or you were just creating these opportunities. And while that gave you, I think, a certain independence to work, um, on what you chose as opposed to if I had lived on in Chennai, I don't know, uh, you know, most dancers, when we grew up in Chennai, we don't really think about creating, choreographing at a very early stage, but you are forced to do that almost when you live in another country. The space creates that uh, change in you. But at some point for me, it became important to come back and to be here. Um, now I spend half the year in Chennai and half the year in the US. It's sort of almost the best, best of both worlds, I want to say. So it's enriching in many ways. And at the same time, uh, it's something that I can uh, find a bridge between those two experiences. And I can say, I mean, because I've actively performed in both spaces, actively worked, taught, uh, well, I've not taught here, but I've taught there actively. The uniqueness of my journey is in trying to find that space between those two. Not necessarily saying I belong to this or that or this has affected me or that. Has. So it's more of finding that space in between the two. And that to me is very interesting where that space lies and where how I navigate uh, the marriage of those two uh, experiences and uh, what it has uh, done to my art. And it's it's very seamless. It's hap It happens over years, right? So it's not something that you can pinpoint and say this change happened or that change happened. It's so many micro changes that happen over years and and all of it informs my dance the way I dance the way I talk the way I everything right so the way I live and to me the, they're one and the same the way I dance and the way I live are sort of um, one and the same so as I try to question and understand that space where that uh, confluence of the two or 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 the gap you know whichever way you look at it is um, when I when I try to understand that and that's I think going to be a lifelong process and that's to me the most interesting aspect of my journey I want to say. Awesome. I completely understand when you say that you know you are uh, place agnostic as a dancer. Um, what happens is sometimes I've seen over the period of years that people usually when you mention a name they're like um, which place and you know they automatically connect you to a place and somehow the recognition factor seems to be much faster because they connect you more to a place rather than some of the you know work that you might be doing mm -hmm. it's, it's quite odd but you, that comes from that, ge that generalizations we these absolutely. generalizations we make right of a if someone comes from a certain place they must be a certain way and that's they you're just making this huge sweeping generalization of all dancers or all scientists or all whatever so True. you know and in fact off of the place itself I yeah, mean, yeah, they are individuals exactly. in their own place and it's influence so you, you exactly yeah. and sometimes you you are not looking at that aspect mm -hmm. at all I agree with that the when you were mentioning about 
uh, both the US and the Indian influences over a period of time. Obviously, you cannot say, you know, as you said, you cannot pinpoint where the thing is. But you do do quite a bit of marrying of both ideas and as well as worlds and artistic interpretations. For dancers who say have moved there or are moving there or want to enter into this uh, field where they're trying to bring together two different ways of expressing these art forms. Mm -hmm. How do you bring them together? How do you marry them? Or how do you collaborate between artists of different genres and then make sure that you bring out your ideas? Mm -hmm. Is there something that you particularly stick to? Like is the specific recipe that you stick to that you think helps? Or do you just say that, you know, this is an ideation and then it just transforms itself? Yeah, so to, to me, it's not important that I marry the two. It's not important that I find, uh, you know, common fact. For example, if I were to work with another artist, whatever their uh, style or practice, maybe it could be uh, Bharatanatyam or uh, it could be flamenco, something music related, whatever it is, the common spaces we are trying to find, yes, but it is not merely looking at saying, okay, there is a certain thing that you do that looks similar to what I do and therefore let us put that on stage, right? So then that's not really having a conversation. So for me, True collaboration is when the two art forms are actually conversing over time and it's something organically develops out of that process rather than you go in with a set notion of this is what the final product is going to look like. So the same thing I think, I mean, and, and I think that applies to whoever's any artist living anywhere. So for someone like me who's, I guess, navigated, both the, you know, for, I mean, not of my own choice but it, this is this is how life, my life is shaped up and so I navigate both spaces and cultures um, so how it I mean informs my work is something that uh, happens naturally as a result of me staying open to that process um, and not having preconceived notions of this is how it should, my end product should look right um, so for dancers who come there who go there I think um, the first thing I would say is I wouldn't start creating or, you know, choreographing or whatever right away. First, we learn. First, we understand. First, we open up. We listen. And it's so difficult to find people who just watch, observe, listen. I mean, there is a lot of beautiful work being created that I see. No no comment on that. But the, the thing is, we don't all have to immediately start creating and choreographing, you know, that I think... Um, is one thing to understand. Um, so observe, listen, watch, read, learn, understand what is going on around you culturally, artistically, and uh, so socially. So many interesting things that are happening. So once you, I mean, not it's not like there is okay. There's a period of observance and then you. So it's it's all going to be tied into each other. But when you've allowed yourself to observe and absorb enough. The, uh, uh, something that you create or choreograph has to come from a space where it affects you deeply. Um, and whether it is a Varnam or a completely contemporary piece, right? And I work in both realms as well. To me, a Varnam also comes from a space where I am deeply connected to that Naika. So it is not that she's the other. You know, I have to find ways to... Uh, present her authentically no who am I in her and who is she in me and that's very important and that is informed by the life I live the world I live in so it's something that that you absolutely uh, cannot Im imagine put setting aside right so yeah I have to work on this this is something I have to work is when I can approach it with the most honesty and authenticity and as a result, then I am driven to do it. I am passionate about it. I, I When I say I am talking about as an artist, any artist. Um, and of course, the work then continues to grow and evolve. That's, that's a given. But during this time, something that uh, unless you are invested in it, and how are you going to be invested in it? Only if you are choosing something that moves you. Then you work as hard as you can on it. right? So, I mean, it's your responsibility to do the to put the best work you can at any given point of time. And that's going to change as the work evolves. But you cannot go up there with the expectations of what the audience is going to perceive of this work. And you cannot create a work based on audience expectations, right? What you create then cre uh, hopefully, uh, you know, engenders a conversation. And so many of the conversations I've had post-performance have made my work 
change or evolve in many ways that I would have not thought of before that. If you open yourself up, you open people's minds up, hopefully. And that is the beauty of creating something that you believe in. In one of your articles, you actually mentioned that you had explicitly set up a few examples and somebody picked up on one of the explicit examples. And the next time you remove that because you wanted them to understand, for example, reading a book, one of your sakis had to keep a book. And it was a very interesting article because I would have expected the opposite. I would have thought that you would keep it because it resonated with the audience. In fact, in that article you had mentioned that you didn't want an explicit uh, sort of a signal. Mm. You wanted them to understand what you were dancing, mm. Mm. which would have been more subtle perhaps. And uh, that's a very nice take on how you want foreign audiences or audiences not exposed to Indian dancers to pick up what you're doing. And I think that's very important because sometimes we want very verbal or very explicit communication. And if you want to go beyond that... Um, I think what I was talking about was the difference between understanding and experience. Um, So experiential art versus um, art that you comprehend. When I go to watch a performance, I am interested in the experience that I have on that day. I am not interested in understanding every nuance that the artist is putting forth in front of me. Because that's too much art, I mean, piece of uh, something to work on. And I've been working on it, let's say, for two years. And obviously, my understanding of it is going to be at the highest level because I have sat and analyzed this thing to so much detail. So when I put it out there, I cannot expect the audience to understand every little nuance or every little idea that is there in my head. An audience, let's say a spectator comes in with an openness to experience what I've given, just share in that experience and then perhaps think about it and and try to um, make the connections or not. That is where the true art exchange happens. When we try to just understand something, then we have already set certain notions Mm -hmm. based on our cultural conditioning. And and this is something I've also discussed in my master's thesis is, is that, see, when audiences come in, all coming in with pre conditioned um, states of being which have actually started the day we were born which kind of family you're born into what religion you're born into from there to what you experience through childhood let's say what you've experienced as an adult what you've experienced on the day of the performance what uh, both artist and spectator it changes your mood it changes your frame of mind so you're sitting in this darkened theater So as an artist, I'm having a a singular conversation with every audience member, which is preconditioned by our individual experiences from the day we were born, correct, right? How can we try to comprehend? Because those preconditioned um, notions are going to then set certain expectations for the audience members. But... We cannot fulfill all those expectations. No artist can fulfill every audience member's expectations. That's impossible. Experience, that's where it comes in. It's that that we come in with that openness to experience. Both artists and spectators. At least are we both coming to that theatre with an openness to experience. Just experience. Then go back and do what you will with it. Hate it, love it. I don't, you don't have to love me all the time. However you respond, at least come with openness. Talking about changing audience perspectives, moving across continents. You um, actually run a sort of an art space where you bring in artists for a more intimate and cultural experience. Why do you see the need for that, given that most artists, you know, prefer having larger audiences or larger sabas or, you know, spaces to perform? Why would you think that they would be actually interested in a smaller space or Where do you see the need for it? Because conversation is lacking in the arts field in many ways, I feel. When I started uh, Kalavedika, which is the organization that you're talking about um, in the Bay Area, there was this, it was a space where I felt a ton of performances were happening. There was, uh, you know, just like Chennai, performances every weekend, either arangetrams or professionals or group work or music. It could be music, dance, whatever, theater, so much going on hundreds of performances you watch performance after performance and then you go home and then what what do you do with that what have you gathered from this performance what have you understood and what have you experienced goes back to the previous point i was making and what is that bridge between is there a bridge between what the artist conceptualized and uh, 
and experienced and what you understood or experienced from that right so what is where is that so i felt that there was a need for smaller spaces where one could interact um with uh, the artist and vice versa this is uh, an organization where we have um, informal sessions where we artists were already visiting the area we have them present on any subject they want it could be uh, obviously it could be as broad as it could but it could be something specific more specific as well okay you do the presentation and then you ask the question sometimes it is in between and it is so it's a very informal situation where you do, the, the pressure from both sides is uh, taken away and the distance is taken away i found that the audiences were able to you know questions they previously would have deemed stupid they are able to open up and ask and i found a lot of joy in that sharing because it's not just hey i'm coming and performing for you and then i have no idea what happened after that but as an artist for me it's lovely to be able to get that uh, curiosity and interest in what i'm doing all artists are more than willing to share uh, so it's like um, that's the reason for the starting of kala vedika i don't want to ever go into the big performance space uh, so it's um, and we also have workshops uh, uh, you know for dancers or okay. you know specific to dancers yeah thank you so much for taking so much time off i think we've discussed everything under the sun <laughs> not only dance which yes. is very interesting given that you know it it was a no holds barred conversation mm-hmm. and uh, with arguments but always refreshing to you know walk out of a room and just drop what you discussed and keep going with life and not take it to heart or make it personal but it was really a joy talking to you about so many subjects mm-hmm. um and then Absolutely. we and i feel like uh, we should have recorded the conversation <laughs> before we recorded started recording as well absolutely i very think interesting. <laughs> <laughs> then we will need to have a session too separate session yes absolutely yeah thank and you so much i it. so enjoyed it mrudula thank you and i'm you know it's lovely to see this initi- and, and hear about this and also be a part of this initiative and i think i think you're doing a wonderful job and i i really hope that you continue to do this and I would love to hear uh, uh, from other so many other artists as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, thank you.